moving on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, as broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every day will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before the lion And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Let me say thank you to the congregation for remembering my wife and I on our anniversary. Um, she enjoys being married so much. She left on uh, spring break without me, but uh, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm all right with that. <laughs> 44 years and, and the Lord's still blessing and we're thankful for that and thankful that we get to share these occasions with you, our church family. I know we have a lot of people gone today because of spring break and I'm, I'm thankful that individuals are, are able to get away. We need... Uh, we need that. We need it now, I think, more than ever before. Before we get into our, our message today, I had a couple of updates that I wanted to give you. Uh, one is in the foyer at the welcome desk, there is um, a financial overview that shows uh, what you, uh, with the Lord's help, were able to do last year. Uh, we just closed out the old church year and are now a little over a month in the new church year. And it's amazing to see how God has blessed us as we endeavor to bless others. 
And on that note, uh, last Sunday I talked to you about uh, missionary, uh, missionaries, Hiram and Yanni Galvez, uh, to the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. And we were able, along with another donor from another church, to purchase a car for the new missionaries there with your offerings last week. And it was over $6,000. And there are others that have asked this morning, can we give today? Absolutely, because there are other needs as this uh, new work is going through transition. And what an honor it is to be a part of the work of the kingdom of God around the world. Well, this morning, um, we're going to be examining the same passage of Scripture that we looked at last week. This week, however, we're going to approach it from a different vantage point. Now, in case you weren't with us, last Sunday we were in Matthew chapter 7. And um, we find in this particular section of Matthew 7 that Jesus is once again teaching the multitudes using parables. Now, I explained to you how parables are are, are stories that Jesus used that dealt with everyday things, but yet had a much deeper spiritual meaning. Now, what we've come to understand through the study of the Scripture is that most of the people that were hearing these stories would have understood about the illustrations that Jesus was using. If he talked about an olive tree, well, they knew exactly what an olive tree was. If he talked about mountains, then they could see the mountains. If he talked about sheep, they were surrounded by sheep. Now, Jesus, however, when he told these parables, well, he didn't always explain them. Sometimes he would tell the meaning to his followers, to his disciples, and sometimes he would tell the meaning to the whole crowd. At other times, he would, well, just leave it for them to try to figure it out on their own. You see, whereas they may have understood the illustration, they did not always catch that deeper underlying meaning. Now, we don't know why Jesus did that. In the parable that we're going to use this morning, again, Jesus kind of tells it and allows it to stand on its own merit. So let me read it for you. It's in Matthew chapter 7. It begins in verse 24. And I want you to listen to what Jesus says as he begins this. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains come in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings because, or for, he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Now last week when we looked at that passage of Scripture, we focused in on the importance of three things. One was listening. The second was hearing. Now, we, we describe the difference between those as <clears throat> we can hear something and it may just sound like noise. Someone may be talking, someone may be preaching, and all you're hearing is noise. <coughs> Listening, however, is hearing that noise and allowing it to make sense. In other words, if they were hearing Jesus, they might not catch on, but if they're listening, something is going to strike a chord in their heart. And then the third point that we looked at last week was our response. Are we hearing and responding? Or are we listening and responding to what Jesus is not just trying to say in this passage of Scripture, but yet trying to say to you and me today? Well, this morning, as I said, we're going to focus a little different. We're going to come at this from a different angle. And we're going to begin by looking at our needs. You ready? First of all, our need to be content. Our need to be content. Now, you heard when I read this passage that Jesus started out by telling these people, hey, 
blessed are those who listen and follow my teachings because they're going to be wise. They're going to be considered intelligent, wise individuals. Now, when I think of a wise person, I usually think of those who, um, well, they're not rash in their decision-making. They contemplate things. They work through things in their mind. They digest the information that Jesus was giving in this situation. They're open-minded. They're usually, if they're Christian believers who are wise, listening and following the ways of the Lord, they're usually in tune with what the Spirit has to say in leading them. And all of these things add up to the fact that, well, these individuals will be stable, like a house built on a firm foundation, and they will be content. Because spiritual contentment comes when we are living close to the Lord. Now, we can assume here that the wise to whom Jesus is speaking of are those who can face the trials of life and yet not be unstable in their life. They can be stable. They can be content. Their life is built on a firm and solid foundation which enables them to be content in Jesus. Content to listen instead of always talking. Content to follow the Lord wherever He is going to lead them. And content to abide in Christ. Now you know when I was reading these scriptures and going over last week's message and then going over this week's message, I, I couldn't help but realize, and I kept going back to the fact that if you take that word content and you change the pronunciation of that word ever so slightly, you take it from meaning, well, a satisfied feeling to looking at something that is inside. You go from content to content. And when we begin to study the Scriptures, you see that the Bible has an awful lot to say about the content of an individual's heart. In fact, if you look in Jeremiah, about chapter 17, he alludes to the fact that it's the content of the heart that makes it deceitful. In other words, if we're not following the Lord, our heart by its nature is deceitful. And the content of our heart will force us or lead us to make unwise choices. The psalmist in Psalm 51 and then again the prophet Jeremiah both speak of the need for God to come and create within us a new heart to give us new content. In other words, take away all of the sinful desires and the sinful motives of our heart and replace them with His Holy Spirit who will lead and guide and direct our steps. The writer of the book of Proverbs reminds us of the importance of guarding our heart because everything that flows from deep inside the heart, it comes from the content that's already there. Make sense? Kind of reminds me of a couple of weeks ago when we saw Jesus using a parable talking about trees. He talked about good trees that produce good fruit, right? And we all, oh yeah, boy, we really associate with that one. But then he talked about bad trees and he talked about the bad, rotten fruit. Do you know what it all boils down to? The content. The content of the tree, the content of the heart, the DNA that is within us. Folks, if we are not living for the Lord, the content of our heart is not what it should be. As Even as Christians, we should daily be examining the content of our heart. We should daily be asking the Lord, what's there that needs to be removed? What is good there that needs to be worked on, that, that needs to be increased? Well, with that said, I think we could come to the conclusion this morning that when a person is content in the Lord, the content of their heart is going to show it. It is going to reveal that this individual is wise and stable because their life is built on a firm foundation of Jesus Christ. That means a lot. 
my mind went back several years when, um, when I, I lived in Colorado. I, I took a, a class at Bible college. The professor was Dr. T. Crichton Mitchell. And I doubt if any of you have heard of him. You may have read some of his books. I know uh, Dale Blake was in one of those classes. But we would always begin class time by doing two things. First of all, we would pray. And after a hard day of working 10 and 12 hours, going to school four and five hours a night, you needed some help. We would pray and ask for God's guidance. And then the minute a man was said, Dr. Mitchell would begin to lead us in that song. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Folks, if the content of your heart is right with God, you're going to be content in your relationship with Him because your life will be built on a firm foundation. Are we okay? Well, the second focus this morning zeroes in on our need not just to be content, but to be courageous. Now, in our day and time, courage is something that seems to be lacking. So you're thinking, okay, pastor, what are you referring to when you say we need to be courageous? I'm talking about we need to be unafraid to follow God's Word even if it means it's going to go against popular belief, popular philosophy, the pressure that is put on us by our peers, if it means going against all of these things, well, it's going to take some courage in order to do that. We've got to be courageous enough to stand for God and stand for godly beliefs, even if it means we're going to be criticized or ostracized from our family, our friends, our jobs, wherever. We've got to be courageous enough to take risk for the kingdom and wise enough to make good decisions. We've got to be willing to make sacrifices and pay the price for whatever it takes, that cost of discipleship. We've got to be willing to build on that firm foundation of life, on Christ, that solid rock. And We need to make every effort that we can to be the kind of people who stand firm in the midst of the storms of life. Do you know a courageous Christian is ready to take a stand against the enemy no matter what? We can't be cowards. We can't run. We can't tremble in fear. I mean, there's a lot in this world that creates an unsettling feeling in most of us. I would venture to say that over the past year or so, that most of us have felt anxious, have felt worried, have felt concerned. If it wasn't for ourselves, it was for those around us. We have been concerned and, and fearful about physical things and financial things and, and relational things. But you know, if Christ is in our heart and we are content in Him and we are exerting all of the courage that we have from our spiritual being, we're going to refuse to back down. We're going to keep moving forward no matter how difficult it is. And you know, folks, I wish I could stand up here and tell you this morning that if you're content in the Lord and courageous in your life, that you're never going to be discouraged. I wish I could say that. I can't. Because you know what? Even though these things change us and mold us and make us into who God desires us to be, we're still human beings residing in a fallen world. There's a lot of things that's going to just break your heart to pieces. But you know what? You serve a God who loves you more than you could imagine possible. A heavenly Father who, in a way that only He can, wraps His big loving arms around us and gives us that assurance inside that our courage is not in vain. That we can stand tall and true Though the waves come crashing and the winds start howling, we can be content in Him. 
Now, the third focus this morning is vitally important for us as believers today. It zeroes in on the need to have a cultural awareness. We can't live with our head in the sand. Now, I know what I'm about to say is going to crush some of your dreams. We're never going to go back to the days of Andy and Opie and Mayberry. (laughs) We're not going to be back in those days when you sat on the front porch and you just watched all of your neighbors and everybody was happy and, you know, everybody went to church. You ever notice that on Sundays? Everybody was in church. Boy, have things changed. We're not going to go back to those days. We have to be aware, however, of what is happening around us. Now, let me explain what I mean here. Jesus makes it clear that if we listen and apply His teachings, we're going to be wise, right? We got that. That means we're going to know how to live a godly life, a Christian life, no matter how far our world goes in a direction away from the Lord. Jesus also talks about those who refuse to hear and listen to what He has to say. He talks about these individuals being foolish. And this causes them to make decisions, spiritual decisions that are disastrous today and will affect their eternity. Now, we aren't always given choices in life, right? We could not choose who our parents were. We could not choose our skin color, our gender. We could not choose the color of our hair or whether we would be able to keep our hair. Those were choices we weren't allowed to make. It was just above our pay grade, I guess you could say. But when you read this passage of Scripture, did you ever stop to think that we are given a choice? You can be wise or you can be foolish. You can make good decisions or you can make bad decisions. It didn't say that you had to be highly educated or wealthy in order to have the right or privilege to make this choice. No, no, no. Jesus is saying, you can be wise or you can be foolish. And you want to know how? You can listen to what I'm saying and do as I'm teaching. You will be wise or you can turn a deaf ear. You can build your house on a rock or you can try to build a sandcastle and live in it. You can be strong or you can be weak. Courageous or afraid. We have a choice And it's almost like we're given the choice of, okay, where are you going to build your house? Are you going to build it on something that is solid? Are you going to build it on the Word that has stood the test of time? Or are you going to build it on philosophies that are ever-changing? Do you know if you live close to a beach, you never see the same beach twice? You say, well, wait a minute, I didn't move. No, the waves come in. The tide goes out. It takes sand. It brings sand. It's ever-changing. And you know, when we're buying into the philosophies of the world, we're buying into the changing tide and the sandy beaches instead of building our house on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to wake up for one thing. We need to build our life our eternal future on the, 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 the never-changing power of God, not on the ever-changing philosophies of the world. So we need to wake up. We need to stop being so closed-minded. We need to stop rationalizing our behaviors, our bad behaviors, our lousy attitudes, our acceptance of sin. We need to just stop and see if our faith and, and our relationship with Jesus is on a firm foundation, does have a firm footing. If not, we need to do something about it. And the choice is ours. You know, as I mentioned last week, as Christians, it's time that we once again are left amazed by the Word of the Lord. 
that we're left amazed by the working of God, the hand of God that we see upon us, upon our church, upon our families, upon those who serve Him. We need to be amazed because we seem to have lost it. We get into these routines that we enjoy and we get comfortable and this is the way we want it and we're not always open to whether or not the Lord is saying, hey, I'm going to move you off center a little bit. Times have changed, so there's some times we've got to change some of our methods. We can't always do like Andy and Opie did in Mayberry. We've got to do what God is calling us to do today. But you know what? His Word is timeless. His call to be righteous and holy, it hasn't changed a bit. And that says to me, and hopefully says to you, that even though the philosophies and all of the religions of the world may be changing and, 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 and doing all of these things, this is where we build our life. This is where our church stands. We've got to be what God is calling us to be. We need to be amazed by His Word. And hopefully, what we've heard this morning will help strengthen us to the point that we respect the Lord's teaching and that we yield to His authority and that we get to the point where we are willing to do whatever it takes in order to shape our present day culture to His Word instead of trying to change His Word to fit our culture. Are we okay? It's here for us. It's our choice. I pray that we listen and not just hear. I pray that we respond in a way that, well, is going to lead us closer to the Lord. I pray that the content of our heart, that we allow the Lord to save us, sanctify us, stabilize us in our walk. And I pray that we experience the contentment of being in Jesus that we are courageous and that we're culturally aware enough that we say, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. I want to pray for you. I want us to pray this morning for ourselves. I want us to pray for those around us. I want us to pray that we would be open to what God is trying to do in the midst of these troubled times and what he is willing to do and longing to do in this gathering as well as gatherings like this all over the world. I believe God is still in control and I don't think for a moment that things are too far gone. I think God is still in control. And we need to let him be in control of our life. So as we bow our head and we close our eyes, whether we're here in the sanctuary or watching from our home or, or listening in our car, I want us to pray and ask God to help us. Forgive us if we've sinned. Wipe those sins away and bring us into his family to sanctify us wholly, allowing His Holy Spirit to abide in us, stabilizing us to where we can stand in the midst of come what may. Jesus, this morning, we need You. We are so thankful that down through the years, when times got tough, we knew where we could turn. When times were filled with rejoicing, we knew to whom we would lift our praise. In the day-to-day -day life, the, the, the hustle, the bustle, the struggles, the worries, the anxiety, help us know that we can still turn to you and that we can be changed. 
I pray for everyone here, Lord. I pray that those who are struggling in their faith and their relationship with you would just say, Lord, forgive me. Come and abide in my heart. Fill our heart. Sanctify us holy, Lord. Help us to be what you have called us to be. Lord, I pray for those that are, are struggling today. I pray for an anointing a calmness, a peace to come over hearts and lives. I pray for those who are grieving and mourning this morning. I pray that your spirit would bring comfort and assurance. I pray for those, Lord, who are overwhelmed this morning by the unknown. Help them to know that whereas we may not know what's going to happen as soon as the service is over, we serve a loving God who can see all things and holds the future in his hand. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would bring about a transformation of our life and help us to come to a place in our walk and relationship with you that there's an uncanny family resemblance, that when people see how we react in the storms of life, that they will not see us, but they will see the Lord and Savior who abides within. Help us today, Lord, for we ask and we pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Could not hold him, the grave could 
Oh, oh.